Okay, what I am doing is what's called number one. Let me do something here first. I want to show you guys something. There we go. There we go. Uh, so you see, Jeff, uh, Darren was correct. He was not doing anything inappropriate. That was on Voyager 1 is where they inserted that graphic to send off for aliens to see what we look like. If you're a Star Trek fan, V'ger, okay? Uh, yeah. Yes. No, proper Just stop. Just stop. Uh, what I'm showing you is Science 360. This is a compilation of 360 mini science videos. And they are matched by topic. If you double click on it, you can go to the actual one. This is it says the chemistry of a cheeseburger. Or I can go back to my piece. Uh, there's the silver saver. It shows you how to save silver, how to protect it. But then also, if you just click on ones, you have 3D printing, science of innovation. 3D printing is really cool. Have you guys been reading about that? That they can print actual objects. Things that fold and manipulate themselves. Uh, this is one I watched. But let me go back to the basic piece of it. Sorry. Da, 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 da. Come on. We pause. And we go back to here. Um, you can also, you can do two things. You can, it tells you how to tap and how to work and manipulate it. Uh, then you go to. Da, da. If you do a two-finger tap, you get this, and this is where you have tags, where you can tag pieces, but they're also tagged for you. So if you have a particular topic, all you do is search for that topic. Maybe you are doing a project on Alaska, and so it talks about the thawing permafrost. Most of these videos are fairly short. Um, let me see if it gives me a time on this one. Six, six minutes, 45 seconds. Um, so they are nice intro pieces for whatever science topic you're doing. Maybe if you're also doing... Oh, so, oh. Okay. I don't do something. Okay. Um, but it is an awesome tool. I loved it because there are so many videos right at your fingertips. And it's easy there for you. Science 360. I know sometimes it's hard to find a good little short video to introduce a topic. So Science 360 and it is free. All right, this next app is the coolest app ever. I'm going to show you a short video. I don't have to cut it off, but this will kind of give you an intro to it. Watch the film from the app in the top 
segment there, but this is the cool part. So within this scene part of it, there's, you can see there's several segments, but you've got the ability, thanks man, you've got the ability to go through here and, uh, and look at each thing here and it kind of tracks progress throughout human history. And then you can go all the way down here to the modern age. You see these things are kind of interactive. Click on the trace of diabetes, which I'm not sure why they don't have Wilfer Grimley there, but they don't. Um, anyway, if you if you go on and download this app, you will not be disappointed because of the ability to spark discussion and uh, and interact with this particular app. They spent a lot of time building this thing, and it's got some cool ideas. And there's a lesson plan online with it as well. So if you access it on the computer side of it, you'll be able to see what all is going on, especially in regards to science and social studies, and clearly a way that those two subjects could overlap interdisciplinary-wise. I'm done. Okay, I'm up next. I actually have two things I'm going to show you. The first one is called TuneDo, and it is actually web-based. It's not an app but you can create and use it on the iPad. But basically what you can do with it, and I'm not gonna go through and show you how to create things because it's pretty simple. It's either drag and drop or it's click. And you can make single cartoons, you can make um, cartoon strips. There's tons of different templates in there. And you can make these comic strips either public or you can make them private. So depending on what, how you want to use them. But you can make cartoons, as I said, you can make cartoon books. And this version of TuneDo is the free one. There is also one where you could subscribe to it, and I don't remember how much it is per month or per year, but I've always used the free one and have never had any problems with it whatsoever. But it's a great website to bring in cartoons and cartoon strips and order and anything else that you want to bring in that deals with comic strips. And the second thing I wanted to show you is, get to it, it's an app. It's for the iPad and it's called Apps Gone Free. And if you haven't heard of this, you're gonna want it. Because what they have done is there are several um, app developers that are, occasionally they will put out apps that usually cost They'll put them out for free for a short time period. They'll put out about five or six out every day. So you can see along the left hand side, you're going to see the calendar if you want to see what was there we go. What was on for that day, you're just going to click on that day and it will tell you if it's still available or it will tell you if it has expired. But it's just a great thing to go out every day. I check it once a day to see what apps are free. And then the kids can download this app as well. And if there's an app that you find that you really like, I would just tell them to go ahead and download the app as is, while it's free. So that way they won't have to pay for it later. Um, it just depends. Justin asked, can you keep them for free or will they expire after a certain amount of time? It just depends on the apps. Some apps you get to keep don't have to worry about ever doing anything else with them or paying for them. Some apps you do have to pay after a certain trial period. So, just depends on the app. Um, I know that uh, when I first got my Android phone and I got my iPad, um, an iPhone eventually, I was vehemently against paying anything for an app. I told myself, I have paid so much for my phone, I'm not spending any more. But, keep in mind that a, an app that will make your life easier um, may be worth the cost of a cheeseburger or a meal at McDonald's that you consume and it's gone uh, forever. Um, so just to put, to put into perspective, I, I don't buy a whole lot of apps, but if there's a good app, I guess I'm done. Um, uh, if there's a good app, I, I go ahead and, and spend the money for it. No, that's okay. That's fine. 
But those two. Tune do and apps gone free. I also wanted to say that sometimes it's okay to pay for things on the internet. <laughs> when you're stuck on Candy Crush and you have two jellies left, it's okay to go ahead and pay for the extra lives and deal with your husband later. Ask your spouse first. I've been on the other side of I only spent five dollars and he did not understand. Okay, I am going to show you two things. I'm going to show you my app, but I'm also going to show you how to make the folders that I have on my my screen, my desk screen here, in case many of you probably already know how to do that, but I know there's probably a sprinkling of people that think that's cool and would like to know how to do that. So what you do is you find two apps that are related and you hold them on until they start to wiggle. And this one is a 3D classic literature app and a Goodreads. And you just put it on top of each other and then it gives you an automatic label, or you can click on it and change that label if you want to. So that's how you make those folders to organize your, your screens. Okay, the app I'm going to show you is called Clockwork Notebook. And it's a doodling app. It's really simple and cute, but I think for the classroom use, it would be a great way to do exit tickets, you could do short formative assessments and it has the capability of emailing whatever you, you put on here. You could have kids do short writes for that common core element where they have to write over different periods of time and sometimes you have to do those short bursts of writing. Here's one I made, Welcome to Speed Geeking. You can type, you can draw, you can put the stickers on there. I thought if you were doing elementary and you were graphing things, you could do that. Um, here's one I just started typing to show you that you can just type on it. You don't have to draw and be cute. Last night I thought if you are doing the setting of a story and you want someone to, a student to quickly draw the setting of the story, that's my monkey, my lovely monkey in the jungle. Thank you. So what you do is you touch the plus to get a new page. Down at the bottom, you can choose your canvases. There's grid, college rule, parchment paper, and whiteboard. You can choose your font and your type. I did notice up here where it says untitled, you only get one type of font. But if I choose that and a green, that'll be down below in the drawing. So if I start typing, I just click anywhere. And then you can move it. The drawing, you can just draw a picture. And then stickers. You can pick the one that they have and you can resize it by pinching and move it around. Or you can upload your own if you have, you can take a picture off the internet and then you can put that on there also. And then up here is where you would email their creation. Yay, finally one that worked for me. <laughs> Uh, what we're going to do for the rest of the time, we've got an, about 50 minutes before, before lunch, we actually have some favorites um, that don't necessarily fit critical thinking or creativity. Um, we're going to show those to you. These are uh, apps that we found are very, very helpful to us um, or, or to students. Um, and uh, so that's what we're going to do. Then we're going to give an opportunity for you guys to show any apps that, um, that you found useful. I know that there's, there's a couple that are already interested in, in doing that, um, so we'll allow you to, to beam it up here and uh, just give a short, it doesn't have to, you do not have to do three minutes, OK? 
Okay. Um, you can just kind of point it out, point out a couple features of it, and, uh, and then just share, pass it around. Um, and then after that, with whatever time we have left, um, we're going to give you the opportunity to just kind of play around. And uh, we've given you a lot of apps. Um, you've probably taken some notes on some of those that you want to check out. You can go in, download them, check them out. If you have any questions or problems with them, let us know and we'll come around and, and help you out with that. So these are our favorites. All right, so I'll start off. Uh, one of the things that I love is uh, my um, stylist. So I don't know if you have an iPad stylist yet or not. Um, they run different price, prices. They're probably going to cost you 20 to 30 bucks. But to me, it's well worth it because, um, pardon me. Well, you get some for five. five the reason that this one was more expensive, oh, it is great. a pen. So I have the pen. And it is a stylus so I can run on my iPads to get my screen greasy with my fingers. But what I love is, is the laser pointer so that I always have it with me. All right? So that's something to consider for purchase. Um, and then the other uh, app that I was going to share, there's actually two of them, is um, I have um, Evernote, which I used to use a lot. And I use Evernote more on my phone than I use it on anything else because it's there. And to me, my phone is just right to use my thumbs and type a lot. The iPad's a little bit big. Um, but you can create notes and you can type in there. You can't write in it. It's the only thing that I didn't like. So um, you can uh, type in it. Uh, one thing that I've used it for that I love is going on trips. I do all my receipts in here. Okay? So if I go on a school trip and I have to keep what I, what I was paying for or whatever, I keep it on my phone, I take a snapshot of the receipt, and then it has tags. So when you go to the tags, um, you can put in uh, like there's PBL receipts or this receipt, so whatever conference you're going to or whatever, you can put the receipts in. So um, it's, a, it's free, easy to use, um, and it's okay for taking notes. Um, it does a lot of other functionality. Uh, there's some Chrome, if you're on a computer, it has some Chrome plugins that you can add to Evernote and bookmark some different things. The one that I really, really like is called Note Plus. Now, Note Plus, the problem with it is it's about a $7 purchase, okay? But I have a friend that went through college and took every note he took in college on this with his iPad. He didn't take a computer to class. And so this is a meeting uh, that I had uh, with Dell, and they were talking about different um, schools that they went to. So you can notice that's my handwriting, because a lot of people want um, a program that will recognize their own handwriting. This will also convert uh, what you write to text or to type. So you can write it in your handwriting and convert it to, to type. And you can save this as a PDF. You can email it out as well. So it's a pretty elaborate, if you want really in-depth notes, um, this would not be something I'd probably recommend for students unless they were upper, you know, secondary high school something. Um, and they might want to buy that for an iPad. But um, I use it a lot for, for meetings. And if I'm out with teachers and things, I can take notes quickly and write down ideas and stuff like that. And so I use it a lot. It was worth the, I think it's $7.95 in the app store. It was worth it to me. It may not be worth it to you, but this is probably one of my favorites that I use a lot. Uh, Notes Plus. It's in the actual called Notes Plus. And it's, it's one of the better ones that I've found as far as being exhaustive to being really in-depth with how to write with a stylist and those types of things. And it, you can write with your finger, but you really want a stylist if you're going to use it. Okay? 